Hey everyone, welcome to the program, WRSA Radio. I'm your host, G1. As always, I hope you're having a good week. Well, my work is giving me fits. Uh, it is that time of the year where, well, all the talk is about goals and performance reviews and what we're planning on doing in 2024 and changes that we're making and all those kind of things. In fact, that's um, uh, something I do need to discuss with you guys uh, <clears throat> with changes that I'm going through at work. I may have to push my uh, show posting back into Friday Thursdays are looking like they're going to become a problem for me in the future, but we'll play, we'll play that uh, by ear and see how it goes, and I'll keep you po- keep you updated about that. But anyway, I don't mind all that stuff so much, uh, as it's it's a it's good to reflect on ourselves and what we've accomplished and what we we plan on doing for the next year. Except, what I do mind is in biz- the business world, so much of it is nonsense and, and empty empty words. It's it's wasted effort. It's buzzwords. It's it's just emptiness, and and I don't like that stuff. So that 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 kind of that kind of thing bothers me. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to I don't want to waste time with that kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, planning is is very important. Setting goals and working to achieve them is something we all should be doing, and and that's the focus of this episode. I want to contrast the current predictive programming sequencing that's revolving around Taylor Swift and and Travis Kelsey uh, and and contrast that with what we really should be focusing on I, I if you don't pay any attention to that stuff then then that's good for you I'm, I'm glad but I can almost say with certainty that you know people that do uh, what I what I want you to do here after this episode is think about these people. This is the time that you do some analysis of the people you interact with and make determinations about them. And and they may be perfectly fine people and they may have you know knowledge of this current thing and and just because we're talking about the swifty thing doesn't mean that that's the only thing. It, it just whatever the current thing is. It, that that's not important. Don't judge them just on that, okay? There's a people who are very well turned on and squared away may have all kinds of interests and knowledge. So just because someone knows something does not mean that you should judge them to be brainwashed and not worth the effort. So you, you've got to you got to dig a little bit deeper than this is the surface level garbage. And and quite frankly, yes, there are quite a number of people who who don't go any deeper than this kind of stuff. But not everybody's that way. And just because somebody has an opinion about the current thing, you know, doesn't mean they're, uh, doesn't mean they're worthless. And, and, And I say that to counsel you on being too harsh and cringy in how you deal with people. I I've seen so many examples of people who just fail epically in human, human interaction skills because they jump on someone for talking about a topic that is popular or, or a TV show or just a movie, something like that. So, oh, well, you know, you're worthless because you're talking about a Marvel movie or something like that. You just come off sounding more like a fool than the person that you're admonishing. This, this attitude that you have to be turned on and tuned up and all, you know, at all times and condition yellow and everything's got to be tactical it's just cringe, bro. Okay. It's it's just so amateur. If you watch sports ball at all, you will see people in the stands and they're all decked out in their team colors. And, you know, I've seen guys in full team uniforms whooping and yelling and acting like a fool. And they are foolish. They're, they are foolish. Don't Don't mistake what I'm saying here. But that's okay, because what's the difference between that guy and the mall ninja? I mean, really, the, the guy who can barely see below his belt, but he's he's kitted out in full Chineseum wish.com tactical gear. Is there is there really any difference between those two people? I don't think so. And I don't hate on those people, by the way. That's that's it's their life. If that's how they want to spend it, so be it. 
I just don't have any expectations of them. I recognize them for who and what they are, and I act accordingly with them. But I don't hate on them. I don't have time for that. And you shouldn't put much time in that either. You shouldn't spend your time trying to be overly critical with people because you think, well, I'm trying to wake them up, you know, I'm trying to shock them back into, into reality. So I'm going to be a jerk to them. I mean, that that's, that's not exactly the way to, to get people, uh, win friends and influence people. Okay. So don't be quick to judge the Swifties and the sports ball people. Um, they're living in their heads, but so are a lot of the people that we have on our side, at least of the, the political fence. Everybody's on a path. I, I talk about that a lot. Everybody's on a journey. They're on a personal path, and they're just not as far down the path as you are, and that's okay. Uh, you, don't, you don't get them to continue walking the path by screaming at them and yelling at them and calling them foolish and stupid. What is far more important here is not how the sports ball game turns out or even how the programming is working. None of, none of those really matter. What is far more important is to simply get the message across to people that it's a distraction. That's it. That's all you have to convey to people. Rather than engage them and have some wild theory or you know, try to convince them that it's an op, just, just tell them that you don't really pay much attention to that stuff and move on. Steer the conversation back to more important topics and ideas. You're not going to convince them that they're being played, but... If you want to get them thinking, just say, you know, yeah, I don't follow all that PSYOP stuff. And then just move on to another topic, just quickly. Just, yeah, you know, but what about this thing, you know? And if they try to follow up and say, well, you know, I, I mean, look, look at all the hype that it's getting. That means it's what they want you to think about. And I don't want other people to be pushing my thinking onto stuff. So I just ignore it. Just leave it at that. You don't have to go any further than that. I think that's going to be far more powerful than giving them whatever theory you have about, you know, the current thing, the current op or whatever it is. Just just lay the groundwork and move on because the human mind has well, has a tendency to convince itself that it's made the right decisions when presented with counter information it tends to attack the information or more likely it attacks the source of the information. They, oh no, that's that guy's crazy. He's 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 full of it. That that can't be right. That can't be real. We've all experienced that. They'll immediately think that you're a kook and, and question your mental state. So just go around that process and don't give them something to work with and attack. Just tell them you think it's all propaganda and then move on. Let them do the work. Let them spend their time trying to prove themselves, prove it to themselves. And maybe it'll convince them that other things aren't as they seem either. When you've successfully diverted attention from the PSYOP, what are you going to do then? What are you going to do after that? Well, that's where planning and goals and future outlook all come into play. I'm not telling you to, to loop your normie friends into this part, by the way. We're, we're, we're moving on from that. Just, 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 leave those, just leave those guys alone and let them, uh, let them uh, work it out themselves from that perspective, um, and, unless, you, unless you need them in, involved in your plans for some other reason. But uh, at, at any rate... Um, if you avoid the PSYOP, you're going to have time on your hands to do important things. And, and that's where planning and preparation are critical to the success of achieving your goals. Let's look at timelines first off, because I think we can all see that there's a hard and fast date coming up later <laughs> at the end of 2024. That is the uh, desired due date to have all of these goals and projects achieved. Uh, timelines on specific items that you have, specific tasks or whatnot, those may slip. Uh, it may, may be due to events and uh, situations that are out of your control, and that's that's to be expected. You know, there there's still supply chain issues out there. There's 
cost of things to consider and prioritization. And all those factors come into play. But the bottom line is, however, you better have as much done as you can by the election day. And that that's just planning for success, in, in my opinion. Maybe, maybe there's some time afterwards to get things done, but I don't know. I just, I have the impression or the distinct feeling that when the election happens, that there's going to be chaos, regardless of how it turns out. And now that you have that date, you work backwards from there, and you build your timeline on all your projects and your needs. And I can't tell you what those should be, honestly. I've got a thousand ideas about that. I've covered that topic numerous times on the show. There's, there's you know, every creator out there in, in this area has different ideas on it. So so I'm not going to try to to lay all that out for you. This is a short video. It's not we we just don't have the we don't have the space for that. Um my advice here is just to stay focused and set manageable goals for yourself and your team. Now, prioritize and cross load the efforts so that you know one person's not worn down by the stress of carrying the the, the total load. It's just uh it's a smart way of doing things across the board, really. Uh, I would put priority on fitness or medical things, uh, skill building, and self-sustainment. Okay, the, the the big four: moving, shooting, communicating, sustaining. Those are those are primary. But but that's for me and mine. Your your four may be a little different. So shooting might not be something. It might you know might be some other form of offensive action. But you get you get the point. Okay. The other big takeaway is that we're running out of time. Uh, the planet is tilting. It's tilting into madness and chaos. And if we hope to survive, we have to navigate that chaos as best we can and not be pulled into the swirl of it. So how do we manage chaos? Well, we, we impose as much order as we can to it. And we'll never make total order. Uh, chaos is a primordial force in the universe it's god in action if you want to go deep about it but uh so it's not something that can be conquered it, it, it we can slow it and we can still it if we plan and we work to execute that plan so come up with goals prioritize them put them into a timeline and begin to break them down into smaller component tasks to work towards achieving them you just kind of eat the elephant one bit of the at a time, and the donkey as well, if you will. Now, before I close the show today, I, I want to hit on another topic that is very important for you to be working on. I don't know where you all stand on this, so I, I want to offer some words that, well, hopefully they'll challenge your position on this, and, and I hope it will convince you that your position might need altering. Maybe not. I, I've, I've covered this topic before on the show. And I don't know exactly how everyone feels about it, but there are some things that become more and more clear as events have proceeded. And that may have, you know, influenced you and, and, and changed your mind on some things. So maybe maybe your, your, your position's moved. What am I talking about? Well, we hear about the concept of the rule of law. We hear a lot about this. Once, decades perhaps ago, depending on how you measure it, we had the rule of law. We had a high-functioning society, and people more often than not followed the law. And, and the law was more often than not imposed fairly, or at least in such a way that the, the balance of people understood it to be fair. They trusted it to be fair. The people imposing the law more often than not did so with the greater good in mind and under the belief that they, what they did was right. What it, they did the right thing, at least as the law required. What it boiled down to was that we had rule. We, we, people basically understood the rules, and for the most part, we all played by the rules. And the problem is that much of that is just belief. 
it was not exactly reality. And that is not something that is, is a criticism. I'm not, I'm not being critical of it. It's how things work. Power resides where men believe it resides. They follow it and live by it out of a belief in it and its consequences because they believe others will also act accordingly. Somewhere along the way, people at all levels of society, some at the top and some at the bottom, just you know, all, all throughout it, individuals, stop believing in the rule of law, and they recognize that the rule of iron or the rule of gold was what they wanted to live by. And they didn't bother telling the rest of us, and thus they became villains. And there is a belief among most people on our side of the political spectrum, I, I would hazard, that if we also abandon the rule of law, that we will also become villains, that we have slipped some kind of moral tripwire and walked over a cliff into that chaos I spoke of. And that is not the case at all. If you do anything this year as a goal, I want you to stop this line of thinking. You are going to, without a doubt, in my mind, be faced this year with a choice. Whereby you will have to decide that in order to live with yourself, that you're going to have to break a law, willingly. Our enemies no longer live by the rule of law. They live by the sword and the coin. And we are at a distinct disadvantage if we cling to the rules written down on a piece of paper as the only means of defending our lives and our way of life. Now that's all I got time for this week. Like and subscribe. Come see us over on Gab and the Mothership. And I'll see you on the next episode.